All right. So inverse operations, we were practicing addition and subtraction and trying to make zeros. And then subtraction and addition and making zeros because addition's inverse is subtraction. Really, it's the opposite. And subtraction's inverse is addition. But then we switched over and we did exactly one problem before you all left Friday to show that with multiplication and division inverse problems, when we're solving equations, we're not trying to zero, we're not trying to get to a zero, we're trying to get to a one. We're trying to make an invisible one. And if you guys can recall, we used the example of problem number 11. And we talked about we want to divide this by, by 8 because the x is on the, equals, the side of the equal sign with the 8. The 8's being multiplied by the x. And when I divide 8 by 8, I get a 1. So once I do that, my equation then is negative 104 is equal to an invisible 1x. But to get this one, I divided this by this side by eight, so I have to divide both sides by eight. And we tend to just do that in one step because with the equations, we try to do the same thing on one side as the other. Do you all remember this now? We talked about our knowledge of fractions and that eight eighths is equal to one whole, that we know that if I divide eight by eight, I get one and that it has to be a one here. Because if we try to do what we're doing with addition and subtraction and get a zero right next to that x, we would then have to multiply the zero times the x and anything times zero is just zero. And that does away with the point of us trying to get the x by itself. We're trying to find what x equals and we can only do that if it equals an invisible one. So with that, we're gonna move today into a slightly more complex version of this, which is, we're going to look at number 13, where there's a fraction. I'm going to rewrite it so I can write a little bit bigger. Number 13 says negative 6 is equal to b over 18. Trying to make my B look like a B and not a 6. <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you, I've been teaching algebra a long time now. Kids mess this up. They get here and they get confused. This is division, isn't it? This is being divided by this. But I want you to think about what you know about invisibles. Remember that was our main focus on Friday, was really pointing out where there were some invisibles. What is the invisible number in front of every blank variable? There's a 1 there. I could rewrite this equation as negative 6 is equal to 1 over 18 times b. These mean the same thing. This is our shortcut version of it. There is an assumption that you know that there's a 1 there. Just like we know that there's a 1 here. Every whole number also has a 1 under it. We have a lot of invisible ones, right? So I want you to think about if this is true, in order to get that b by itself, I have to turn this 1 over 18 into an invisible 1. So let's pause that idea. And let me go to a different fraction. If I have two-thirds times a fraction, is there anything I could multiply it by that you think would get us to the number one? How do I get something here that when I multiply two over three by it, I get to one? And at this point, I want you to come grab a pen and get to your boards and copy this down. And let's see if your team can play with that idea just for a minute. 
can grab a marker if there's not one at your board. We did not do a great job of cleaning up board period. Check your board, there might be one there. I'm going to give you a quick hint. Before this one, there's going to be a fraction here that we're going to make one. Think about what has to be true about a fraction that equals one. 